In this video, we're going to look at some carboxylic acids and some esters. They are very similar to each other, just one small difference. So what they both have in common is they both have sort of the same kind of root part to it, if you will. So they have a carbon, and they have an oxygen that is double bonded to it, and then they have an oxygen that is single bonded to it. So both carboxylic esters and esters have this part in common. Now there's some other stuff here. We're going to put some things on these ends, and those uh, things we put are going to be the difference between the acid and the ester. So talking about the carboxylic acid first is they contain a COOH functional group. Okay, so there's that root part that they each have in common, but what makes the carboxylic acid what it is is it has a hydrogen right there. So this here is all this stuff here. Now, that's not the end of it because there is... Um, some kind of carbon chain that is over on this end. And that's what we use this R to represent would be any length of carbon chain. So keep in mind that the whole carbon chain would actually also involve that carbon. So we do need to consider that when we look at the length of our entire carbon chain. So let's look at some examples. Firstly here we have this example. This is going to be our easiest of all of them. Um, so if we're going to name this one, all we need to do is we need to take the regular um, hydrocarbon name and we're going to change the E to oic acid. So the uh, so this this one has one carbon in it. So our simplest um, hydrocarbon would be methane. So we want to replace the E with oic acid. So this one becomes methanoic acid. Second example here. Now we have two carbons. So that's going to stand for ethane. But we're going to drop the E and change that to oic acid, ethanoic acid. And finally, this one has three carbons in it. So we're going to take propane, drop the E, and make it propanoic acid. And there you go. Those are your carboxylic acids. Oh, I guess I have one more example here. And the only way we can make this a little more difficult is to add a substituent group to this one. So first step is we'll identify our carbon chain. This one should be four long. So butane becomes butanoic acid. Then we're going to number our carbon chain. That's our first carbon. That's our second carbon. This is our third carbon here. That is a methyl group. So we have a 3-methyl butanoic acid. And that is everything I have to tell you about carboxylic acids. Esters are very, very similar. So this was our carboxylic acid. And if we're going to compare that to an ester, the only difference is that this H has now become a carbon chain. So we're going to replace the H in the OH part of the carbon chain with, uh, uh, with a carbon chain, yeah. So our ester contains this particular functional group. And like I said before, we're going to put a couple of carbon chains on here. Now, it is important which one's where, though. Because this one on uh, right beside the oxygen is going to become the first part of our name. And then this one on the left here, the one that is attached to the double bonded oxygen, is going to become the ending part of the name. So let's look at some rules here we're going to have to follow. So our first rule says we want to name the carbon chain next to the oxygen. So that would be that one. It's only one carbon long. So we're going to call it methyl. Our second rule says we want to name the other carbon chain, and again, this one actually is only one long, with an O8 ending. So methane, methanoic, uh, sorry, methan, methanoate. There we go. So the E in methane here gets dropped, and we're replacing it with the O8 here. So methyl, methanoate. Let's try another example here. So again, we've got a methyl here for our starting name. And now we've got two carbons there, so this is going to be an ethanoate. Methyl ethanoate. And here's another one. So again, this, this one attached to the oxygen will be our first name. So two carbons means we've got an ethyl. Now here we've got one carbon there and three more there makes four. So there's actually four carbons in total. I just squashed three of them together here. So that's going to be butanoate. So ethyl butanoate. 